Hi and welcome back everybody, me Robert here and in this video I'll show you how you can utilize the SAP integration suite to connect to a non-SAP REST API. I will showcase this to you by integrating our very own Global Text as a Service REST API with SAP. This service runs in the Google Cloud and I will build an SAP connector for it live in this video. You will see the whole integration steps that are required in the SAP integration suite, but also a small middleware that we write in JavaScript. If you're new on here, on this channel, you will never see any marketing slides, but we always will look very deep into the technical details. If that's something you're interested in, please subscribe to my channel. So without further ado, let's get to it. We navigate to our SAP BTP cockpit and here we select the sub account for which we want to create the connector. In case you don't have a sub account in your global account yet, you can create a sub account with create sub account. Here you can enter a display name and a subdomain. The subdomain will become part of the URL which you will use to access your applications. In my case, I choose BA for Blue Internet, dash dev for development, dash one. And I enter the same name as display name here. In the region section, you can choose a cloud provider and a location that makes sense for your use case. If you want to use the sub account for production, then you can click advanced and use for production. However, in our case, we use this just as a development account. Therefore, we do not select this option and we click create. Once your sub account is created, it will appear here in the list of your sub accounts. We are switching into the sub account by clicking on its name. And here in your sub account, you want to make sure that you have an entitlement for the integration suite. If you just created a new sub account, then you don't have an entitlement for the integration suite yet. In this case, you switch back to your global account. And here on the left side, you choose entitlements and entity assignments. And here you choose a sub account for which you want to create the entitlement and click select. Here you click configure entitlements and then you click add service plans. Here you can filter the entitlements by choosing integration and then you choose integration suite. And here on the right side, you can choose a service plan that fits to your needs. And at the bottom of the page, you click add service plans. Once the entitlement for the integration suite has been assigned to your sub account, you can switch back to your sub account. And here you can verify that an integration suite entitlement has been added to your sub account. Next, you want to subscribe to the integration suite service. And for this, you navigate to the service marketplace here on the left side. Here in the service marketplace, we look for the integration suite. We choose integration suite here. And if you have not created a subscription to the integration suite yet, then you can click create here. Once the subscription has been created, you switch to security and role collections here on the left side. And here you search for the integration provisional role collection. You click on this integration provisional role collection and then you click edit. Here in the user section, you enter your email address. And then you click save. Then you want to sign out from the system and log in again. Additionally, you want to close and reopen the browser window. At least this was necessary in my case. Now you should be able to access your integration suite subscription by clicking on services, instances and subscriptions. And here you can choose integration suite. This opens your subscription of the integration suite and you can click on manage capabilities here. Here we can see all the capabilities of the integration suite. However, for our use case right now, we just need the capability extend non-SAP connectivity. 
we activate it. This creates the tile extend non SAP connectivity in the integration suite dashboard. Here we can click on Discover Connectors. This opens the Open Connectors page where we can create instances of existing connectors in the SAP API Business Hub. But in our case, we want to build a new connector that is not available in the SAP API Business Hub yet. Therefore, we click on Build a New Connector here in the top right of this page. And here we find two options to create a custom connector. It's either import or create. With import, we can create a connector from some well-known formats. And with create, we could create a connector from scratch. We select import to see which formats are supported. Here we find the connected JSON format, which is the Open Connectors own format. But there are also some other prominent format supported like Swagger, SOAP, OData or Postman. In our use case, we will create the connector from the Postman JSON format. We can do this by selecting a Postman JSON file of our Global Text API from a local computer here. In order to get this Global Text as a Service Postman JSON file, we first have to switch to gt4m.com which is our global tax platform. We head over to gt4m.com, global tax for marketplaces and more. Here you can click on solutions and here you could subscribe to global tax as a service on the Google Cloud Marketplace or to global tax as a service in the Blue Internet Commerce Cloud. This gives you access to complex indirect tax calculations, especially for multi-window marketplaces, but also to what number validation and global indirect tax rates. For example, we can click on the tax rates map here in the menu. This opens our Google Interactive Tax Rates map, where you can click anywhere to get the tax rates, the indirect tax rates for this exact location. A subscription to Global Tax as a Service also comes with our already pre-built SAP PTP Global Tax Connector. However, since I want to show you how you can build a custom connector to any REST API, I just log in to gt4m.com with my SAP demo account to get the Postman JSON file. In our gt4m tenant instance, we click Global Tax and select the API tab. Here we also can generate the REST API keys which we need to consume the Global Tax as a Service REST API. This basically gives us a consumer key and also a consumer secret, which we need to authenticate to the service. And for some resources in our Global Tax as a Service REST API, we also need to provide our tenants, tenant instance ID, which we find here in the top of this page. And here we can find the Postman samples of our Global Tax REST API, which we download by clicking on it. Now we switch back to the SAP integration suite and we select this Postman JSON file from our computer. We choose the Postman collection and then we click continue import on the top right of this window. This gives us a list with several resources which are available through this API. But for the sake of simplicity for this demo, I just choose one here. Then I set a name for this import and then I click import. Here we can set the properties for this connector. Here we can see that the Postman collection had a dynamic URL, but we don't need this here. And instead of this URL variable, we set our base URL to https gt4m.com. Then we scroll down to the parameter section and here we can delete the URL parameter. But we leave the configuration as determined by the importer. Then we click Save and Next. And this shows us the Resources tab with the imported resource taxes rates. In order to be able to call this API and its resources, we have to create an instance of this connector first. 
We can do this by clicking Authenticate Instance here. We set the name of the instance here, and then we click Create Instance. Now we can click on Test in the API Docs, which opens this specific instance of our connector. Here we scroll down and we find our imported resource taxes rates. Now we can click on try it out here, which now allows us to edit the query parameters here. But for now, just let it execute here and see what happens. We can see the curl command that has been executed here. And we also can see the request URL. And here we can see the server response from the API. In the response body, we see the message that we are not allowed to access remote tax rates. Well, this message is correct since we did not provide the required credentials yet. If we scroll back to the parameters of this API, this resource, we can see that a consumer secret and a consumer key is required here to access this service. So how can we make this required information available to our connector? Well, we need to switch back to the setup of our connector and scroll down to the configurations. Here we can click Add Configuration and Blank. This creates a new line here in our connector configuration. And here we can enter the required field for our API, which is Consumer Key. And we set the display name to GT4M Consumer Key. And we can copy the name to the description here as well. As type of this field, we choose password. And we make this field a mandatory field. Then we create one more line here in the configuration, blank line. And now we enter consumer secret as the key name. And we name this field gt4m consumer secret. Again, we set the type to password and we make this field a mandatory field as well. Don't forget to add a description here since this field is mandatory here. And then you can click save and next and continue. This takes us back to the resources tab where we can edit the instance. Here we now can see that these two mandatory fields have been added to the configuration of our connector. We enter our consumer key here. And we also set the consumer secret here. And then we click update. Now we can select our instance of our connector here. And this basically means that our connector gets executed with the credentials that we have defined in the instance of the connector. If you are an object-oriented software developer, you could see a connector as a class and an instance as an instantiated object of this class. But now let's test this resource here again. We click on Try it out and scroll down and then we click Execute again. We scroll down and we can see that we still get the error, sorry, you are not allowed to access remote tax rates. The reason for this is that although the consumer key and the consumer secret have been stored in the instance of the connector, they have not been passed as query parameters to the API. So in order to pass the consumer key and the consumer secret, as query parameters to our, to our API, we have to switch back to the setup of the connector. And here we scroll down to the hooks section. And here we can create a pre-request hook. And this basically is sort of a middleware that gets executed right before the request gets passed to our API. The hook is written in JavaScript and we can do this as follows. 
A hook provides several variables to us, which we can manipulate before they are sent to our API. So for example, the variable request vendor parameters holds the query parameters that are sent to our API. In JavaScript, we can store these parameters in a local variable like so. Let underscore request vendor parameters is request parameters. This variable has to be a JavaScript map, but if no parameters are passed here in this variable, then this variable is not of type map. Therefore, we check if this request vendor parameters variable is of type map, and if it's not of type map, then we create a new empty map. Now we can store the consumer key in this request vendors parameters map, and we can get the consumer key from the connector instance that is exposed to us in a variable named configuration. The same we can do with the consumer secret. And finally, we call the done method here, which sends back our manipulated request vendor parameters as the new request vendor parameters. In order to make this happen, continue has to be set to true but this is the, the default behavior anyway. Now let's save this with save and next. And here in the resources tab, we again choose our connector instance here. Then we open our Texas rates endpoint here again, and we click on try it out. We scroll down and click execute. Now we scroll down to the response section. And here we can see a valid status of 200 and no error messages in the response body. Now that everything seems to work fine, we can scroll back and we can enter, for example, a country code here. For example, we enter the country code AT, which stands for Austria. And then we click execute again. We scroll down. And here we can see a valuated tax rate of 20% that the API returned to us. We can test this with the country code of other countries as well. For example, we enter DE, which is the country code of Germany, and then we click execute. We scroll down and we can see the value added tax in Germany with a tax rate of 19%. Now let's do a more sophisticated test with an address in the United States. Here in the United States, the tax rates differ between states, counties, cities, and zip codes. And they even can differ between certain streets. So now we enter a very unique address here. Country US, State California, City Mountain View. Here we enter a specific zip code and we even provide the street. Then we scroll down and click Execute. Now we scroll down further and we see the response. Here we can see that several different tax rates apply for this address. We have a California County tax, a California State tax, and several special taxes which apply for this address. Now that you have successfully integrated with a non-SAP REST API, you can use the other SAP integration suite tools like API management to orchestrate your processes around it. That's all for today. If you like this content, please don't forget to click the like button, the subscribe button, and also the notification bell below. Thank you for watching.